good day students today we will be dealing with physical quantities and uh, measurement techniques join me as we um, solve this together learning together also physical quantities we can't deal with physical quantities without first of all dealing with what is the true definition of physics? Let's start. Before dealing with physical quantities, it is good to understand the definition of physics. Physics is a study of materials and the way to predict and control the properties associated with these materials. Materials can be solid, liquid, or gas. Physics also studies the interaction of radiation that is energy with matter. Physics is also found in how sound travels and electricity flows. So we are to drag the following words into the correct boxes to give us a full definition of the, what the importance of physics is. Physics is used in marketing and finance to indicate how market would change. Physics can also be used to predict the behavior of billions of atoms in a solid material. Mathematics Is also used in physics to measure quantities and process data. So let's check. That's correct. Let's move on. Let's deal with measuring quantities. Length. The measurement of length is of different categories. Now, let's do some little exercise or activity that is based on length by dragging the correct words into the correct boxes. Measurement of length can be done, can you guess, for a piece of wire. Do we have it? Yes. The height of liquid in a tube or the diameter or radius of a planet orbiting the sun. In a scientific laboratory, measurement is done with the use of a, can you guess now, meter rule. Materials such as a thin sheet of paper is measured with a metal rule again to be able to find its thickness. Let's we've checked and it's correct. Let's proceed. Measurement of length that involved curve lines is used in the measurement of cylindrical objects, such as a cylindrical rod or measuring cylinder. Let's drag the following words into the correct boxes to be able to determine how the length of curved surfaces are done. Measurement of length that includes curved surfaces is done by what will be the first option? Let's try. Laying a thread along the line. Next will be to mark the thread at either end of the line. Um, also, Lay the thread along the route to find its length. 
Are we there? Correct. Let's proceed. Measurement of volume. There are two methods used in measuring the volume of a solid object. This depends on whether the volume is regular or irregular. For a regular object, majorly with three sides, that is, it has length, breadth, and height. Breadth is also known as width. The three sides are multiplied together to obtain the volume. This is applicable with the use of a rectangular block. For stairs and cylinders, the formula for the volume is fixed, which is calculated when the radius of the object is known respectively. Let's do this activity by dragging the words into the correct boxes. Most objects do not have regular shapes but rather have irregular shapes. Therefore, measuring the volume of some object is done through displacement. So we check. That's all correct. Let's move on to the next slide. Measurement of volume now via displacement. Irregular shaped objects cannot be measured with the use of length in order to obtain their volumes. So let's solve this particular exercise by dragging the words into the correct boxes. To find the volume of an irregular shaped object, what do you think will come first? We have to fill a measuring cylinder partially with water. All right. Then we have to ensure that the measuring cylinder is three to four times larger than the irregular shaped object. After that, we have to immerse the regular shaped object in the partially filled measuring cylinder. The increase in the volume of water that will now happen in the cylinder is now equal to the volume of the irregular object. Can we check now to see that we are right? Correct. Now, units of length and um, volume. The meter is the SI unit, that is the international system of unit of length. Other subunits are the centimeter and kilometers. Now, let's see how they relate. 100 centimeters is equivalent to one meter. 1,000 meters is equivalent to one kilometer. 100,000 centimeter is equal to one kilometer. The millimeter and the liter are not the SI unit of volume. But it is to be noted that volume can be measured in cubic meters. One cubic meters is equal to one million cubic centimeters. Is 0 0.000001 cubic meters is equal to 1 cubic centimeters. 1 cubic decimeter is equal to 1 cubic centimeters. Let's deal with some past questions. A rectangular block of wood has dimensions 240 millimeter multiplied by 20.5 centimeter times 0 0.040 meters. Calculate its volume in cubic centimeters. Let's go through the process before we pick the answers.
All right. So length now is equal to 240 millimeters. And don't forget that the volume or the answer should be in centimeters. Knowing fully well that what 10 millimeter is equivalent to one centimeter, 240 millimeter will now be equal to one centimeter over 10 millimeter times 240 millimeters. So this will cancel this, this and remove this. So length now in terms of 240 millimeter is equal to 24 centimeter. When 24 has been multiplied by one centimeter. For the breadth, let's label it small b. That's 20.5 centimeter, which can be written as 20 and a half centimeter or 41 over 2 centimeter. Then we now have the height h to be equal to 0 0.04 meters. Don't forget that one meter is what? 100 centimeter. Then 0 0.04 meters is equivalent to 100 over 1 times 0 0.04 and that gives us 4 centimeter. Now, volume is length times breadth times the height. So we now have length is 24 centimeter times breadth is 41 over 2 times height 4. Everything now in centimeter. So unit of volume will now be centimeter cube. The value of the answer now 2 year 1, 2 year 2. For 24 times 2 is 48. 48 times 41 gives 1968 centimeter cubed. So, is that part of the option 1968 centimeter cube or cubic centimeter? Yes. So, let's check. That's correct. As you can see. Let's proceed. Now, the diagram below is that of the Mary cylinder. What unit would be most suitable for its scale? Don't forget that a memory cylinder has breadth, that is width, has height, as you can see, has what? Length. So, in terms of the volume, it will not measure the what? Cubic centimeter or centimeter cube. We have it as part of the option, cubic centimeter. Now, let's check. That's correct. With that, we've come to the end of the class. But we will not go without dealing with uh, we picking or choosing the correct uh, statement in terms of the summary that we've done for the day. Physics is the study of structures and the ways to predict the study of these structures with energy. That statement is what? Wrong. This does not only deal with the study of structures. It can also deal with study of living and non-living things, or even materials. So, let's check the second statement. Physics is the study of materials and the ways to predict and control the properties associated with these materials. Yes, the statement is correct. Yeah, but we cannot leave the first statement out. So, let's go through it. This is the study of objects and the ways to predict and control the measures in line with these materials. This is wrong. We have two statements contradicting 
one another. Objects and materials. So the statement is false. The second statement will be correct. So let's confirm that is correct. Now, we are also to choose the correct statement from what we have here. To measure the volume of a liquid, a measuring kettle is used. No, kettles are used in homes, not in the laboratories. To measure the volume of a liquid, an irregular object is used. Not at all. To measure the volume of a liquid, a measuring cylinder is used. This is correct to be able to determine the length, the breadth, and the height of the liquid. So let's pick it and check. That is correct. With this, we've come to the end of this um, session. Do well to subscribe to our website www.edube.com and check all of our interactive books and notes for further reading and study. Bye for now.